My talk is on cytokines and regional brain volumes. Um, first, a little background. It's well known that HIV causes increases in the cytokine levels of many uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines as well as IL-10. And some of these increases predict disease progression and mortality. For example, TNF-alpha is associated with progression to HIV dementia, dementia and AIDS. Inflammatory cytokines also contribute to blood-brain barrier disruption and facilitate HIV entry into the brain and therefore play a role in hand. Um, some previous studies have associated high plasma MCP1 with brain atrophy and white matter changes. In chronic HIV disease, um, even after effective combination ART, many inflammatory markers remain elevated. Neurocognitive measures in chronic disease have also been associated with the plasma cytokines. IL-10 is an anti-inflammatory cytokine that inhibits monocyte production of many pro-inflammatory cytokines. We were motivated to consider the ratios of pro-inflammatory cytokines to IL-10 because such ratios have been shown to be significant in other neurological conditions. For example, Alzheimer's disease is associated with high IL-1 beta over IL-10, major depressions associated with the IL-6 to IL-10 ratio. It was suggested back in 1996 that the balance between TNF-alpha and IL-10 may be important in HIV pathogenesis. And indeed, um, a high TNF-alpha to IL-10 ratio is associated with HIV disease progression. The objectives of our study were to investigate the relationships of plasma cytokine levels to volumes of brain regions and to neuropsychological test performance in chronic suppressed HIV disease. We looked at concentrations of cytokines as well as ratios over IL-10. We had 52 subjects, HIV sub positive subjects, who underwent neuropsychological testing and brain MRI. They were over 40 years of age. They were on CART for at least six months. Cytokine levels were measured by multiplexing, and this was a cross-sectional assessment. This is a list of the 18 inflammatory markers and cytokines that we examined. It includes interleukins, TNF-alpha, MCP1, VEGF, and so on. Structural MRI data were acquired at 3Tesla, processed with FreeSurfer, and we looked at the volumes of 10 brain structures and the three composite gray and white matter volumes shown here. Oops, sorry. What? We uh, normalized the raw neuropsych um, neuropsychological test scores to Z-scores and computed a global NPZ score as well as composite scores in these four domains. We used multivariate linear regression to look at the effects of cytokines on regional brain volumes, adjusting for age, nadir CD4 count, and intracranial volume. Pearson correlation co was computed between NPZ scores and cytokine levels. 52 subjects, as I said before, they were, the mean age was 51. 88% of them had undetectable plasma viral load. When we looked at absolute cytokine concentrations and regional brain volumes, we found that several cytokines were negatively associated with brain volumes. And the ones in bold here are the most significant, IL-1 beta, which is associated with globus pallidus and putamen volume, and IL-8. There were no associations that had p-values less than 0.001. However, when we considered cytokine ratios to IL-10, we found that many more cytokines were involved and the p-values were much more significant. Um, these are associations, negative associations, between cytokine ratios over IL-10 and white matter volume. We found simil similar results for thalamus volume. About nine cytokine ratios were associated negatively with thalamus volume. Cytokine concentrations showed inverse correlations with composite NPZ scores for executive function, psychomotor speed, and learning and memory, and the cytokines are shown here. In particular, um, learning and memory was negatively associated with, NP, uh, with MCP1. The global and composite NPZ scores did not relate to cytokine ratios, however. So to summarize, for multiple pro-inflammatory cy uh, circulating cytokines, we found that high ratios over IL-10 were independently associated with decreased white matter and thalamus volumes. In contrast, 
most of the absolute cytokine concentrations were not related to regional brain volumes, even though IL-1 beta and IL-8 did show volumetric associations with P less than 0.01. Neurocognitive impairment correlated with elevated cytokine concentrations, but not with ratios. Our study limitations included the cross-sectional design, the lack of HIV negative controls, and a relatively small end that prevented us from considering more variables. We conclude that high circulating cytokine ratios to IL-10 may be markers of brain atrophy in HIV patients on CART, especially if they occur along with elevated IL-1 beta or IL-8. This means that a central factor in HIV neuropathogenesis in hand may be an inflammatory environment that's characterized by insufficient IL-10 response to the elevated pro-inflammatory cytokines. If these results are confirmed, ratios such as IL-1 beta over IL-10 may reflect the immune status of chronically HIV-infected patients. We need further study of pro- to anti-inflammatory cytokine ratios as potential markers of disease severity that could um, possibly supplement traditional assessment methods. So thank you, and um, I'd like to acknowledge our patients and staff for making the study possible. Question? Um, maybe I have a question. Uh, did you measure uh, immunosense to various uh, opportunistic infection? For example, for CMV. Did we measure co-infections? Yes. No, we didn't consider that. Thank you. Oh, yes, please. Yeah, this is a very interesting study. I have only one concern that methodological, uh, that you know, subject, 50 subject, whether it will suffice to derive valid inference based on that, mm -hmm. uh, number one. Number two, the statistics R square, which has been used, is pseudo in nature because you see the p values mm -hmm. uh, are significant and varying in significant level, but R square remains constant. That means R square is not an appropriate measure here uh -huh. to be utilized. So this is a caution. I thought I can provide yeah, to you. The, I, the R was for the the whole model. No, that the, the beta was the, the, yeah, the that's, that's standardized not, coefficient. Yeah, that's why I'm just suggesting mm -hmm. your sample size is very small. It could be taken as exploratory in nature, mm -hmm. and um, uh, valid inference could be derived if you have adequate number of sample based on the objective which you have. Mm -hmm. So that way it is okay. You can explore it, right. and then it's uh, too early to vouch for using R square on that on such a small sample size. The R square remains constant in indicate that it's pseudo in nature uh, in particular situation. Yeah, I agree that it's a small sample size and there are many variables we couldn't consider. For example, some of these cytokines are markers of endothelial dysfunction and we some weren't able to look at any cardiovascular disease risk factors. Yeah. And that should be done in future work. Yeah, so better avoid using R square. I still have time for one no. question. No. Yes. No, 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 we do. Yeah. Okay. Yes, thank you, Dr. Kalpana.